And Chris, I, I totally agree. And you bring up a couple of good, great points, I would say. So as you discussed earlier, you talked about the documentation, defining the use case, getting the data, and you just hit on the next question that I want to ask you, methodology, right? Methodology, it's very important. You know, and, and this is key for many customers, many organizations. What is the key to drive that project success, right? Yeah, and, and this is, and it's, and it's, I'm not going to give an overly technical data answer because this can be applied to, what I'm going to tell you can be applied to any project in any type of situation. The real key right. to driving product project success is to set a definitive set of goals and a methodology to validate that pro progress as the project goes on. At the very beginning, you create a requirements document on that both parties can agree to. Now, you can get into real trouble here with having it too detailed, so much so that no one wants to ever pick it up again. Or it could be too bland and too short where it leaves a lot of room for negotiation. Oh, I might have done this or I might have not have done this. Um, you kind of have to have detail and conciseness. So it's going to act as your roadmap. So if your requirements document is going to be your roadmap to success. If the client and the consulting company both agree on the requirements document and the detail and everything that's in it, that's going to be a huge step in ensuring success for the project. That's only part of the equation, though. One can accomplish the goals, but if the journey to get there, to accomplish those goals, is horrific, that will definitely overshadow the result. So this means that you want to implement a regular process to review these, this progress whether that being scheduled benchmarks, code reviews, and or touch points, all of those are key to ensure what's being produced is, by the consulting firm is actually what the customer wants. So this approach can save money with person hours and build professional trust between the two parties. Uh, ultimately, this could lead to more work between the two parties for the future because not only will you be accomplishing what you want, but you'll be establishing that professional trust between the two parties. And more often than not, you know, when you create a relationship, it's hard to get in, but once you're in, if you create that trust and actually are effective in what you're doing, then a client, the relationship is gonna be more apt to be renewed because you know what this company can do. They know what the quality that you're producing, and then you have that handshake. That's something that it's really hard to get when you're dealing with consulting, it's just hard. And so, but at the end of the day, this whole process that I've talked about as far as trying to figure out what, not just a requirement stock, but what's, what will work, um, that's a predictive model in itself. And this predictive model I just described as far as the factors involved and in trying to figure out where you're gonna go next with the consulting firm, that's something that's been used for many a year. Yeah. And Chris, basically everything you just said right there, prior guests have hit and touched upon that process, the methodology. So important to have bring that key synergy to allow, you know, customers to work together with their, their consulting, their advisors, their partners, or even internal. So everything you said there is so true. That was what's going to allow that successful engagement, that successful deliverable. I couldn't, couldn't say it better as what you just did right now. Really appreciate those insights. Sure, no problem. And I and, and to just add on to that, whether you have an external project or an internal project, the methodology should be similar because you've got to, your requirements document acts as your testing document for whether or not you've actually accomplished what you need. And so the synergy between all of those factors is critical to ensuring the success from start to finish. You don't want to have... Uh, a tumultuous time in the middle because then you're gonna you know, have a sour taste in your mouth about the process and you have to go back and review the process. So obviously nothing's perfect and everything gets tweaked uh, when you have the new project come along you figure out what works and what doesn't work. But this kind of, again, this is cyclical too. So you just wanna make sure that you listen and understand everything that's gone around you with your client and also the people on your team who are executing the work. So it goes both, it goes a lot of different directions. Totally agree. And, and you know, Chris, I, I have to ask before we wrap up, you know, as you talked about 
you know, the technology, you talked about the processes, the methodology, you know, what are some of the trends you see, because you, you've had the experience to work with the SMBs, the enterprise and global customers of the world today. What are some of the trends you see in, you know, the whole predictive analytics space, the, the BI space, as well as just not only about the technology, but also to your point, the methodology and process, how are those evolving and changing so that, you know, customers can execute on these new data driven visions, I would like to call it. Yeah, and, and this is hard because data intimidates a lot of organizations. Um, you have stacks and stacks of you know data and you have numbers and you have Excel files and you have flat files. And it's like someone sticks them in a closet and no one wants to open the closet door. So uh, I believe that organizations need to fully commit to the concept of the methodology and methodologies of predictive analytics, which means trusting the data that has been gathered internally and externally. They can't be afraid of the data itself. They can't believe, they can't be afraid of how much data is in there, what the data is saying, and how to proceed from there. There are a multitude of modeling strategies, algorithms, and testing to provide ample solutions to their problems. There needs to be 100% buy-in or they'll be running in a quagmire of mediocrity. In most cases, the answers to their business needs are right them under their nose, right in front of their eyes, buried in the data in front of them. They just have to trust the process and being able to trust and commit to the process and being able to interpret what that is. So when you look at it, you look at all these stacks of data and you're, just, you're all wide eyed and you're trying to figure out, my goodness, what am I going to do with all this? Where do I start? Well, I mean, I told you where you start. You take a use case, you take a question and you answer it. And then you, you basically climb that mountain incrementally. So as you get the confidence in answering some of these use cases and understanding the data that you have, trying to get more questions answered becomes easier because you've done it. You now have a blueprint on trying to figure out how to answer some of these urgent questions. Yeah, we want to get better. Some are more, you know, urgent problems that you have to get, maybe something on a weekly process that you need to fix. Some are more quarterly, some are more annually. The point is, is that the methodology to get that data and try to address how to analyze that data and figure out what you have, and then going from there to figure out where you want to go, that becomes easier the more you do it. But it doesn't get done if you're kind of half-hearted. If you're 50-50, then you're going to be pretty much running in place and you're going to be wasting time and money on your team. You don't want to do that. So then you get another cost risk and you don't have much to show for it because you spent money, you're kind of sort of doing it, kind of sort of not. Um, so you just need to really dedicate and immerse yourself into the process of analytics. Um, don't be afraid to find the answers. I mean, the whole point is identifying a problem. The first part of solving a problem is identifying it and being truthful about it. Nothing changes here. The data, you have to listen to what it's saying to you. And then once you know what you're dealing with, it's a hell of a lot easier trying to figure out what to do next because you know what you're dealing with. You're not dealing with any surprises. So now you just have to figure out, okay, what's the process to which I can fix this? What has worked in the past? What might be working now? What hasn't worked? Throw that all together, you got yourself a predictive model that should help you. Yeah. And Chris, yep, yeah, totally agree. And like you said, regardless of the changes, now the more data customers are getting, you have to identify, as you mentioned. Right? You have to understand the process, putting together the methodology. And to your point, the, the key one, trust, right? Trust, very, very key, you know. Yeah, trusting your data is important because the data doesn't care. Data doesn't have a mind of its own. Data is not subjective. Uh, the data is a, a result of something that's already happened. So you can't change that, but you can acknowledge it and listen to it for what it is. Couldn't say any better than that. Well, Chris, <laughs> I want to thank you so much for taking the time and joining me on Talking Data and More, providing those valuable insights. Really appreciate it. Well, Chris, it's, on, it's an honor to be on this uh show with you. Uh, it's been too long. We'll fix that. Uh, I enjoy everything about this. Always love talking data. Thanks so much for having me. I really appreciate it.
No, thank you. And hopefully we'll talk to you soon. Take care, Chris. Bye-bye. Sure. Take care.